Okay guys, in today's video, we're gonna be taking another look at Cardano and specifically the price action of ADA. With uh, the most recent price action being quite positive, is this going to be sustained or are we looking for a small pullback here and there? Guys, as we get into this video, if you find it useful and informative, do go ahead and hit that like button. I really appreciate it. If you're new, make sure you've subscribed, hit the bell, tap on all notifications and you won't miss another Cardano update. Guys, let's get into it. Okay, so we're going to start here with Cardano against the USDT. Uh, this is the weekly chart and Binance is the data source. Now, there's a few things on this chart I really want to kind of just make clear. Obviously, we have the Elliott Theory, five impulse waves to the upside. This started back in the crash of March 2020. Um, wave one peaked in July of 2020. Wave two correction was uh, kind of put to a bit of an end. Uh, with the low point being set about uh, 21st of September around then. Uh, that really triggered wave three. Wave three was obviously the fantastic highs that we have seen with Cardano. Um, and again, this was around May, right? And there's a few things uh, that are really important that we'll just get to on that in a moment. Wave four correction, although this may not have actually come to an end, I do feel that actually we've reached those low points, but there's always the possibility that we drop down a little bit lower. With that being said, this kind of did come in, I think it was around a dollar or so as the low point there. Now, obviously, wave five, I've put this up there at $10. It seems like a most sensible um, place to actually put the fifth wave. Um, the Fibonacci uh, retracement tool uh, with the extensions enabled shows us about $7.20. Now, there's a little bit of variation between those two prices. And I think this is specifically really just around um, the functionality and what is coming to Cardano. Right now, the technicals do not know about all the up and coming projects that are due to launch once smart contract functionality rolls out. And also the technicals do not know about all the projects that are waiting to pull over from the Ethereum network to the Cardano ecosystem once those smart contracts arrive as well. With all that additional stuff added to the melting pot, it almost feels that $10 is a very sensible number to be aiming for. Okay, so with those five impulse waves, it's actually a really nice and neat um, version of it, right? We can see that it actually adheres to a lot of the principles of Elliott theory. Nothing is invalidated, and it is actually very, very neat to look at, which is fantastic. So this is a good, clean example of Elliott theory moving to the upside. Now, the other things that we can see here on this weekly chart is that stochastic relative strength index. And anyone who's been watching our Bitcoin videos will know that we are referencing the stochastic more and more most recently as we continue to trade sideways. But one of the fantastic things about that stochastic relative strength index index is it helps us understand where things were when we were at the bottom of a wave and where we were when we were peaking those waves, right? Um, so let's take a look at Cardano. So obviously the March crash of 2020 actually saw that we were coming down, right? We were basically pulling the momentum of the stochastic down. It was at 23, almost oversold, right? And then uh, basically it was only a week or so after that that it actually went down to 1.4 on the chart and that's why you really started to see that momentum change and we started to push the price up, right, as we go into wave one. Now, wave one actually peaked up here at 98, overbought. Anything above 80 is overbought. So what you saw here was basically an overbought Cardano. So a correction was going to be due. This is wave two, the wave two correction, right? And we see all this come right the way down as we bottomed out on our momentum, on our uh, stochastic relative strength index at 0 0.9, okay? So obviously a bottom was found during this correction and we were oversold during that correction, okay? So that was a fantastic thing to see. Then obviously we triggered wave three. Now, wave three was actually kind of longer than expected. We actually hung around up here for a while. We actually got this momentum pretty quick, right? We actually found it previously just up here, the uh, previous peak of wave one, right? We actually hovered around here for a little bit. We had a pullback and then we continued. We found the next leg. We pulled back. We went up to a little bit more. We went up a little bit more, right? But what thing that's really important about this third wave is the manipulation that was also going on with Bitcoin, right, in terms of that Wyckoff distribution, because it was artificially being pushed in various different directions to make people buy, to make people sell, and to prolong it, and then obviously redistributing it at the end. Now, 
during this, the actual um, stochastic relative strength index, you could tell that it was actually losing momentum much earlier, right? So ultimately, you could argue that this actually should have been the high for wave three before that manipulation for Bitcoin, right? And this would have actually have been about $1.46 and or so, okay? But that's where your momentum really kind of started to pull out of the bag. And it actually came right the way down here, oversold, believe it or not, with a small peak just here on wave three, okay? And obviously, when we had that major correction or major correction as many people will refer to it as the bear market bear phase whatever but the wave four correction actually then took us down to these really extreme low areas on our stochastic relative strength index right now on this weekly chart it's 0 0.6 and this is an area that we haven't seen since we were over here in the wave two correction. So we already know that we're pretty much rock bottom considering all these other kind of correction waves and where they've been, right? So right now on this weekly RSI uh, or stochastic RSI, we know that we are as low as we have been during the March of 2020 crash and in our phase two or wave two correction um, in September, right? So right now we know that Cardano ADA is at rock bottom and ultimately can grow in value significantly from where it is, as we have seen since the wave two to wave three um, correction here, right? This, this push to the upside. Now, if we have something similar to this happen over here, it does put this between that $7.20 and $10 range. And that's a pretty comfortable number to be having considering where the stochastic relative strength index is and obviously taking a look at the very neat Elliott theory five impulse waves to the upside so on this weekly chart things are looking pretty good for cardano um, and nothing here is alarming and again it really does adhere to that long-term hodl and again if you're looking to dollar cost average better positions there's going to be a few opportunities um, but obviously the rewards are going to be lower now as we go into the final phase of the bull run and we're looking for you know peaking out right uh, ultimately if um, you were not convinced of a kind of bull market this was really the signal to be looking for with one and two right because this is where um you know we were buying up cardano at uh, pretty decent values i think we got in at about um eight cent or something like that around here somewhere um so again this is a pretty good correction that allows you to accumulate pretty decent positions before you go into wave three now wave four has been that second coming it allows you to get decent positions uh, in some buy zones obviously there's going to be lower returns than if you were down here naturally but there's still going to be pretty decent returns at this point but as we climb up wave five it's going to get harder and harder guys so um you know yeah not a financial advisor but uh, do your own research and uh, dofr your own conclusions and all that kind of good stuff right let's get into our daily um, and here, obviously, there's a few things that's worth noting. Obviously, the peak, we have the Fibonacci retracement tool that comes into $7.20. Uh, all that stuff we've spoken about, I'm not really going to go into that too much. Um, but ultimately, this is the part that's really interesting, right? So uh, when we take a look over here, this sideways trading, obviously, we had the head and shoulders pattern, uh, really obvious on the uh, hourly, uh, more so than the, the daily here, but you can see it's there. Uh, and again, obviously, overbought, right? When we're up in the peak of that head, uh, that actually came in at 100. We had the correction, bringing it right the way down and um, so right where the bottom here we are oversold at 2.6 and obviously we're moving this correction we're entering the overbought area right now um looking at resistance around here right but ultimately the main uh, issue is going to be coming up at about $1.28 um, and again we can hang around up this upper area here or have that momentum completely drop out of Cardano very quickly. It all depends on what else is going on in the space. At the moment for Bitcoin, um, we're seeing the price rise up, trade sideways for a few hours. The momentum completely drops out of the stochastic relative strength index. It goes to oversold without actually doing too much damage to the price. And then it takes the next step up. If something like that were to happen for Cardano, then we should slowly edge our way up and up and up over the next of the course of a few days days and weeks right as we start to get more and more traction into the fifth wave and once that sentiment in the market generally changes so right now this is a real positive move um, looking for good support lines there's definitely going to be one around here at one dollar and 14 um, so if there were minor corrections they're going to be a few to kind of watch out for um, so let's jump down into our hourly view okay and this is where you really do see uh, what's been going on and this is exactly testament to what I was just talking about it's happening for Bitcoin and it's happening for Cardano here as well um, so as I just move this down and just bring this down a little bit what you're seeing here let me just uh, remove that for a sec right so we have um, basically an oversold ADA right down here we then push it up into an overbought ADA just up here and then we have a small correction here 
that basically corrects almost the entirety of the stochastic relative strength index that allows us to then to continue, right? So we bounce up, our stochastic still drops down, losing momentum. And, and as it does this, basically we'll con continue to trade in this little sideways motion here. And then we take that next step. It's looking very much like what Bitcoin is doing right now. Um, and as I said on the Bitcoin video earlier, I'm really cautious over what happens on Monday. Ultimately over the weekend, we can continue this. And I think it's gonna be a pretty positive and green weekend. I think going into Monday, as we saw previously, once those traders and those institutions start to get back into their daily routines on Monday, I think we're going to see things actually get uh, get you know some profits taken, some manipulation on Bitcoin. I think we're going to start to see um, some red days. So hopefully it won't be too bad. Um, Bitcoin, in my opinion, needs to hit at least 40k for um, for it to even really warrant a major-ish correction to the downside. Um, so at the moment, Bitcoin's at 34. I think that's going to continue growing. I see 36 next. If that happens, then Cardano ADA should be on a journey as well to the upside. And I think Cardano has the potential to go after that $1.28 if Bitcoin has a, a chance to go after some of those other higher numbers. So right now for Cardano, with the momentum happening here on that stochastic relative strength index, looking pretty positive. Looks like it's coming out. It looks like it's going to continue to grow in line with what Bitcoin is doing. Uh, $1.28 seems to be the most logical next step for Cardano. I think that's going to be the next barrier where it will then actually go back into overbought. And if it continues to trade sideways, testing that area of resistance, um, hopefully we'll be able to breach it um, as that momentum again shifts from overbought to oversold whilst trading sideways. Uh, we could breach $1.28 in uh, hopes that Monday will be less severe for Cardano and for ADA. Um, so I think ultimately there's a, a lot of real positivity here now for Cardano. Uh, never really has left us per se. Um, and there's lots um, of really cool things happening in the space here now as we start to heat up after about uh, a two month kind of correction. Again, I still feel we've got another week or so left of um, volatility and a bit of uncertainty. Um, again, end of July, beginning of August is what we've said on the channel for a while. So those are still my expectations. I wouldn't be confident until we've reached those yellow box areas. Let me go back up to my daily and show you what I mean by that. Um, so basically, there's um, some areas on our charts that are key areas that we want to be making sure that we cross and cross over well. Um, so for Cardano, we're looking to cross $1.83. If we can get above $1.83, I'll be very confident that we should be in this wave five push to the upside and there'll be very little downside at that point there. Um, but until we get there, I'm very cautious. I would say that there, uh, everyone should be you know, avoiding um, things like leverage where possible. And of course, I'm not a financial advisor and it's important that you do your own research. And uh, in doing so, I'm hoping that you will obviously understand that owning your own crypto is absolutely vital. If you do not own your keys, you do not own your crypto. So keeping things on exchanges is highly risky and depending on the exchange, some are better than others, but still risk. Uh, and again, if you're using leverage, that's higher risk there because during these kind of damn uncertain times where there is manipulation happening, um, you can get squeezed and you can get liquidated. But the good news guys is if you hodl and you own your own crypto, and you hold it privately, you will never be able to be liquidated. So it's um, it's one of those scenarios, guys, where in situations like this, the most vulnerable people are the ones that are using leverage, the ones who are getting liquidated by the institutions, by the manipulation. Uh, and ultimately, these institutions and these manipulators, they are taking a look at how many positions are going long, how many positions are going short, and uh, they are basically targeting whatever one makes them more profitable. As we saw, when we broke 30K on Bitcoin and the price went up instead of down, right? And that was because so many people were shorting Bitcoin at the time. We have to be very cautious and hopefully guys, um, you're doing your own research and you understand all these things. So for Cardano's ADA, hopefully we're in for another good day tomorrow. Um, be cautious over Monday. Um, if you're a trader, be aware of that. If you're a hodler, prepare yourselves mentally for that. And with all this said, done and out of the way, hopefully you have found this brief update for Cardano useful and informative. If you have, then do go ahead and hit that like button. I really do appreciate it. If you're new, make sure you've subscribed, hit the bell and tapped on all and you'll never miss another Cardano update. Guys, with this said, done and out of the way, I hope you have a fantastic day and I'll catch you all in the next one.